Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I'm going to be bringing you an After Effects tutorial on the 3D swiping hand effects I used in my Battle of the Editors round 2. And so if we just take a quick look at this, as you can see we've got panoramic screens, which they look really nice, and all in, in this tutorial I'm just going to be showing you how to time up that swiping hand there, and also the movement of the screens, making them shuffle around. Which, um... And um, then I'll leave it to your imagination to maybe, you know, experiment with it. I'm sure it could be maybe used in like a transition and just try and do something original with it. So, in the description, there'll be a WinRAR file, and all you need to do is just extract it by right clicking, clicking extract. And in this file, there'll be three, there'll, in this folder, sorry, there'll be three files, which is a number overlay which I use for the screens, which just give it a bit more life, and also a cinematic which I used in the example just in case you don't have your own so you can all, you can still always just try it out and see see what it's going to be see if you can do it and then also we've got a uh, screen I've got the um, rendered hand movement so that's all ready for you and if you're interested all it is is just a cinema 4D uh, file cinema 4D animation with just a 3D hand swiping across which is pretty simple stuff but you don't have to render it out it's all rendered there so we just jump into After Effects, and we've got, I've already, as you can see, I've already imported the three files. And first of all, we're just going to drag our cinematic into a new composition. It's 15 seconds long, but it doesn't really matter. We can always trim it down later. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our screen. So we're going to go to Composition, New Composition. I'm just going to name this Screen 1, and make sure it's 1280 by 720, 59.94 and about 10, sec 10 seconds long would do. We we'll click OK. Now we've got our new composition. We're going to go to our timeline, right click, new, solid, make sure it's comp size, and make sure it's black. And then we're going to click Control D to make two of them. And then we're going to go to our effects and presets tab and um, type in fill and go down. And then we've got this fill and we're going to drag it onto the top black solid. Now it's all personal preference what colour you make this, but I'm going to make it a sort of light blue, which I think would work quite well. And now we're going to make a vignette, so we're going to go to the shape tool and click on ellipse, and then we're going to double click, which will make a mask, then we're going to go to our mask options, and then we're just going to feather it, so just feather it out, I don't know, maybe about 600, yeah about 600 looks good, and we'll just close that down. Now, to give it some life, we're just going to add on this um, number overlay. We'll just make it about the comp size. doesn't have to be precise. Don't worry about that. And we'll just, because we can't see like our colors, we're just going to go to the blend modes. If you can't see this, just click F4. And we're going to click on Add. Now you can see we've got a bit of life to the screen. And now all that's left to do with the screens is just type in your te text. So let's type in tutorial. Let's type in whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But and then, it may, and then we're going to make about four screens. So we're going to go click on screen one in the project area and click Control C or Command C, and then press Control V three times, which will give us our four screens. And then go go through and change the text to whatever you want. But for time purposes, I'm just going to carry on. So now if we go back into our cinematic comp. We're going to select all of our screens by clicking on the bottom one and clicking shift and clicking the top one. And we're going to drag them in to our timeline. Now we're going to make we want to make all of these add. So we're going to click add. Again, if you can't see it, click F4. And then we're going to click F4 again and make them all a 3D layer. And then we're going to go to click S on our keyboard and to make get up scale. And I'm going to make the scale 52. And then we're also going to click P on our keyboard to get up the position. And then we're going to click the stopwatch to make a keyframe. And then we're going to click on R. And we're going to click on the stopwatch for the Y rotation. Now if we close all of these up and just click U to get up our keyframes. We're now going to just position the screens to get like the panoramic feel that we're looking for. So the screen one, we're going to go to the Y rotation and make it minus 45. Screen two, we can leave it how it is. Screen three, we're going to make it 
plus 45, so positive. And then on screen 4, we're going to make it 90. And now we're going to align this, so we're going to go to our camera view and click on top. So now we can see the top of our screens. Now screen 1 is the is a diagonal one. Oh, clicked on the wrong thing. So we're going to click on it, and we're just going to drag it down and just put it a bit to the side and below screen 2. Screen 2 can stay where it is, and then screen 3, we'll, oh, clicked on the wrong, click, didn't click on it properly again. And again, stupid After Effects. And then we're just going to try and make it match up with screen 1, giving us a symmetrical look. And if we go to screen 4, and if we just zoom out a bit, and we're just going to put it at the bottom of screen 3, there. So now we can see, sort of see our symmetrical view taking shape. And we're just going to click on, uh, and then we're just going to go back to our active camera. I'm just going to zoom back in. And as you can see, now we've got our panoramic screens, which look nice, look really nice. And now, so now you've got, you've got your text on here. We're going to go to about three seconds. And we're just going to click the diamond, the, the diam these diamonds for all of them, which will just make the keyframes at the same positions. So they'll stay, so they'll stay exactly still for three seconds. Now we're going to want to go forward about 20 frames. So we're just going to cl click shift and then page down twice, which will make us go forward 20 frames. And now we're going to want to try and animate them to move around. So we're going to make screen one, I think, actually probably be easier if we start off screen two. We're going to make this, now we're going to try and replace it with screen one's position. So we're going to just copy the quick keyframes we've we made for screen one, then click on screen two and can paste them. And the same with screen three, we're just going to want it to replace screen two. So we copy the quick keyframes we made for screen two and paste them on screen three. And the same with screen four, but get screen three keyframes and paste them on screen fours. So then they've all moved around except screen one. So we're going to then want to make this minus 90, and we're just going to go to our top view again, zoom out, and make it sort of like, you know, the opposite to screen where screen 4 was originally. So now if we go back into our active camera, we have the animation here. But as you can see, they sort of overlap each other, which isn't really what we want. So we're going to just try and line them up a bit. So if we go about three quarters of the way in, we'll be able to see now screen four coming in. So we're just going to want to make it the gap, just using your arrow keys, just try and tweak them a bit so the, so the gap's about the same as it normally would. And if we click, click on screen three, but go about halfway, and if we just move this, maybe just add them. Move it over a bit, and then if we click on screen two, just move that one along a bit. Out there, and then same with screen one. Move that quite a lot over. Just hold it in. And screen two, just just play around with it. I mean. It might take a while, but I mean, the bet better it looks. I'm not going to spend too much time on it here. Just so um, so here, screen four needs to go over quite a bit. So it's just this, just this little tweaking, which will just help your edits look really nice. So that, that looks that looks nice. So now we've got this animation where they come across and move around. So now we're just going to if we just cl close up. Actually, if we just click on you, so we can see our keyframes for one of them. Now, all we're going to want to do is just drag in our swiping hand. And I've made this massively too long. But we can fix that by just going time. And then if we just time stretch. And if we just make it one second. That should all it should need to be. So now it's only one second long. Now, if we go to our first keyframes. And if we just click shift to make them snap. We're just going to want to move this along. So just before, when he's just about to start swiping, which is about there, and 
we just need to try and line it up so it looks so it looks realistic. So now as you can see that's lined up pretty well. And that makes yeah that looks that looks nice. And if we just ram might as well just ram preview this quickly. Um just click N. Now if we just take a quick look at it. Just ram preview out. So we can see what's happening. So let's just have a look. So as you can see, it's all timed up nicely. And it's just spinning them around, which looks really nice. And then to make this look even nicer, we can add some motion blur to them, to the screens. So if we just innate, if we just click on the motion blur tab down here, we can also do it for the hand even. So for all of the screens in the hand, and then we just want to go up to the top here and enable motion blur. So now if we go maybe halfway into the animation, you, you'd be able to see this really nice motion blur. So we go on full, so you can see how it's it looks really nice. And that's the tutorial, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Come check me out. Just subscribe if you and leave a like if you like the video. And uh, this should be the first of many, hopefully. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, and peace.